I uh, purchased a DL1 data logger from Race Technologies. Got it off eBay for about 800 bucks. Uh, and that became sort of the basis of my data logging system in the car. I expanded that to uh, include another sort of home built Arduino um, sort of unit that sort of extended the uh, capabilities of the DL1. Uh, and when I purchased the DL1, it also came with a Race Technologies LCD screen. And I really like the idea of having just a single screen to display all the sensors rather than having separate gauges for each sensor and, and displays for each, each sensor. It starts getting very messy in, in, in the cabin. So I used the little LCD screen for a long time. Um, it was pretty cool. Uh, it was, it's, it's user configurable. Uh, you have four screens that you can scroll through and you can configure each screen however you like. Uh, it's obviously only black and white. Um, you can do basic vertical and horizontal bar graphs, um, displays text, and you can even put bitmaps uh, into, into the unit as well. But it could only do nine uh, items per page, uh, be it a bitmap or a unit or a display, only nine. Um, and that became quite limiting. And I'd find that during a transport stage, I'd constantly be scrolling through screens um, so that I could check out what was going on in the car and see everything because um, I couldn't see it all in one go. So I was forever scrolling, which started to get a little bit annoying. So I thought I'd have a go at making my own sort of Arduino controlled screen. Um, and I started, just bought a couple of different screens from eBay to see what worked and what didn't. Um, obviously the first possible choice was a standard, um, this is a 18 by four character. You all right? 18 by four character uh, LCD screen. Um, these are awesome. They're super cheap. So a couple of bucks. Um, yeah, they um, they now come with like these little uh, I squared C communication boards on the back of them. So it's literally power the thing up and two lines to the I squared C bus, and that's it. You're away. Um, because it's a bus, you can add more and more of these screens. So I've got two of these already in the car. One for the navigator's um, trip computer and one just in the boot so that when you are uh, filling up the two tanks you can see how much fuel's in each one. But it's basically just for text, so they're a little bit limiting, um, and not really what I wanted for the main, the main screen. Also got one of these OLED uh, screens. Um, I think they're similar to what's in like a Nokia phone, the older ones. Um, I got it up and running. But it looked pretty cool, a um, few colours, but was way too small um, and looked pretty difficult to program, so I didn't really play around with that too much. And then I finally settled on this nice three and a half inch colour uh, LCD screen. This is about 12 bucks, I think. Uh, it's designed as a shield, so it, it is designed to... I've got to get this right to uh, plug straight onto an Arduino. Uh, so that's what I ended up uh, deciding on using, but obviously um, that's just the start of the story. Found some uh, libraries for, for this screen, which is one of the reasons why I chose this specific one that looked pretty good. And uh, once I got it in the mail, plugged it into my Arduino Mega and uh, she was up and running pretty quickly. But there was a catch. Whilst this screen is designed as a shield and plugs straight into the Arduinos, it was originally designed for the Arduino Uno, which is a earlier and slower, with less input and outputs than the Arduino Mega, which is what I wanted to use. And whilst all the Arduinos are compatible, compatible with the shields. The ports had been swapped around between the Uno and the Mega, which meant that 
some software trickery needed to be done to allow the Mega to, uh, to run the screen. And this slowed the screen down significantly. Um, it slowed it down so much that I wouldn't be able to use it for what I was using it for. Because the graphics just wouldn't update fast enough. But that wasn't a massive deal because I was never planning on using a standard Mega as the basis for the screen. I was going to use something else. So that's your standard Arduino Mega. Uh, that's not a, well, it's not an Arduino. That's just a, a clone, a Chinese knockoff. Um, works exactly the same. Uh, I just buy the knockoffs because they're so cheap. Uh, use them on a heap of projects. They're quite powerful. Heaps of input outputs. Heaps of um, RS232 communication ports. Uh, heaps of analog inputs and 16 megahertz, so pretty quick. So yeah, used, used a lot of them in various projects. Whilst cruising the internet one day, I came across this little unit. This is an Arduino Mega Mini. And uh, whilst it's considerably smaller than the Mega, it has identical specifications apart from the form factor. The input, same amount of inputs and outputs, uh, same power regs on it, everything identical. Um, when I saw it, I just had to have it because it was so neat. Uh, didn't have a project for it yet, but threw it in the drawer and was pretty, pretty confident it was going to come in handy one day. So, when I saw this screen, I instantly went, oh, I've got something I reckon will work really well with that. So the idea was to combine the two, the screen and the Arduino Mega Mini, as one little unit, a little self-contained, fully programmable screen. So that's the task. So originally the plan was to just glue the Max 232 to the, uh, the back of the, uh, the screen and uh, just then hand wire all the connections up. I thought it was just a one-off unit so it was a bit rough but I'd get away with doing it that way. But then I thought well I've got to add a connector to the rest of the car and I need some sort of power reg and it all started getting a bit too messy so the decision was made to design up a proper printed circuit board to mount everything to. A little bit more expensive but a much nicer job in the end. And here is the board. Uh, simply a place for the screen to plug into here. The Max Tooth, the, the uh, Arduino Mega Mini solders onto here. Um, got a, a, a plug for the power and serial communications to the rest of the system. Uh, a, a con an RS-232 converter chip. So this is required because the Arduinos have also have serial ports. They're TTL level serial ports, so 0 to 5 volts. And true serial RS-232 is 0 to 12 volts. So you need a, some sort of converter there that can both step down the incoming 12 volts down to 0 to 5, but also step up the 0 to 5 to 0 to 12. And there are obviously little chips to do this. Um, and this is a fairly new one, a Max 232 chip. Um, it's uh, quite small and it's on a printed circuit board because it also requires a whole bunch of capacitors in there to help with the step up of the voltages and uh, impressively they used to have to use electrolytic style capacitors but now they've managed to use even little tiny little surface mount ones which is very impressive and makes the whole unit very small and rather than redesign that I've just bought a unit pre-made and that solders straight down to the printed circuit board there I've also got a little buck converter to do the uh, drop the 12 volts down to 5 volts to power up the Arduino and everything. And that also sits on the board. The board's also got spots for uh, 9 push buttons to allow you to go through menus and, and change things uh, on the screen. So that's a little printed circuit board. And um, I've already started soldering up this one. So there are the, the nine push buttons. 
uh, I've sold the connector on and uh, the, the two, Max 232 chip um, halfway through soldering that on so um, get to work and finish this unit up and show you what the next step is yeah but before I finish up soldering up the board I'll show you a quick shot of the uh, software I used to design it and here it is it's called dip trace um, which is a terrible name but it does work fairly well um, I've done a fair bit of uh, CAD, uh, AutoCAD and SolidWorks mostly, and the user interface sort of works relatively similar to those two, so it's pretty easy to pick up, even if it does look like um, the software came bundled free with Windows 3.1. It just looks terrible, but don't hold that against it. Uh, it's also got quite a powerful uh, freeware or shareware version, a trial version, um, which is why I used it. Um, it's got a good zoom function, a scrolling mouse zoom function. Um, it's got uh, a good uh, selection of um, good library of standard parts. So the push buttons the, and the capacitors there and the connectors are all already in the library. But it also allows you to create custom parts. So this Max 232 chip here and the, uh, the actual Arduino Mega Mini. Uh, and the screen are all custom parts. Um, it's dual layer, so you can flick to the other side so that the, the buttons are on the opposite side to everything else. And the trace function for adding traces works really nicely. It's really quick and easy to use. You can just pick up a trace and move it around. Um, so that all works fairly well. The downside to it is it's all in imperial measurements uh, and I haven't worked out how to change it to metric uh, and in one sense that sort of that you know it's reasonable to do that because the majority of components have imperial pitch pins on them um, but it makes it a nightmare for me when I'm trying to design enclosures and stuff because my brain just does not work with imperial measurements so I end up having a spreadsheet to convert between the two. Um, anyway, once you've designed the board you can really quickly um, convert the design into your industry standard Gerber files and uh, ship them off to um, to get your pretty little printed circuit board back. Um, there you go. So after a few hours of soldering, well not quite a few, maybe an hour of soldering, uh, there is our unit with our screen, buttons, push buttons, the uh, Mega Mini soldered onto the back, the RS-232 converter chip, the, uh, the connector, and, uh, and the little power supply, which has got a few little bodge wires, because originally I was going to use an LM sort of style uh, voltage reg chip with a couple of capacitors, but uh, I was asking a little bit too much for it, uh, going from 12 volts down to 5 or 14 volts down to 5 off the car, and it was getting a little bit hot, so converted it to a little little buck converter chip which is why there's a couple of bodge wires there but it's all pretty neat so we can just forget about that and uh, that's the unit so uh, obviously just mounting a bare screen and print circuit board to the car like that is a little bit tricky so uh, it's on SolidWorks to design up a case for it uh, and then get it 3D printed and here is the design of the enclosure in SolidWorks. Uh, it's a three-piece unit uh, with sort of the main box, a button cover here, and uh, some cable management bits at the back. Uh, if I take away the button cover and have a look inside, you can see there's a slot that runs all the way down there, and another one that runs down here, and uh, that allows the printed circuit board to slide down, and that's how the printed circuit board uh, is mounted. Uh, on the back, or the other side of the unit, there are little cutouts for the USB connector and for the SD slot. Uh, these blocks here and these holes are where the heat set knurled threaded uh, heat units get um, put in and that's how the uh, screen is mounted in the car 
uh, and these cavities here are just to reduce the uh, amount of material that gets used and make the uh, whole unit cheaper and faster to print. Uh, on the back we've got a um, another little sort of cavity that I need to make a aluminium cover for and that allows access to the connector for the for the input output cable and then we have this little slider which uh, acts as um, sort of hole grips the the cable on its way out and uh, sort of acts as the strain relief so there you go simple as that send it off get it printed up uh, and we have a custom enclosure so after quite a bit of uh mucking around in SolarWorks, I ended up with this design of a case for the screen. And then I got it 3D printed at a company in Melbourne called CAD, spelled with a K because they're cool, CAD 3D. Everything fits nicely, but I'm not very happy with the finish that I've got on this button cover. Um, it's, yeah, it's just, it's really not a great finish. It looks a bit tacky. Um, I'll probably end up using this. Um, I did, by accident, order the wrong material previously and I got this white one. Um, the finish on this is much better because it's a completely different sort of uh, 3D printing. This is a um, based on like it's a thermoplastic whereas this is a resin infused plastic. Um, this one's a bit tougher and because of the thermoplastic it allows you to use little um, heat certs, little threaded knurled inserts that you can put in with a soldering iron and the plastic melts around the, the knurled insert and you get this really nice sort of threaded insert and that's how I mount, I'm going to mount it to the steering wheel. Um, can't do the same thing with this style of plastic because it's a resin infused plastic but I'll probably try and paint that and if it comes up nicely I'll work out another way to attach it to the steering wheel because this is such a nicer finish but for now we'll uh, stick with this one and we'll slide so I've got a couple of little a uh, couple of little, I don't know, slots um, that have been manufactured inside the case and that grabs hold of the printed circuit board and she just slides in to the case like that. We've got a uh, hole for the USB port at the back to program it and uh, then a slot for the uh, little SD card. There's a little SD reader on the back of the um, screen. Um, which you can use to uh, just hold any data or, or show different uh, pictures on the screen, bitmaps and stuff. And that little button uh, cover that slides over and I've got some nice little caps, capped buttons to stick over those push buttons. So the next thing to do is a um, little bit of programming uh, and uh, program the, uh, the screen up. So here it is in its nice little 3D printed case. Um, unfortunately the camera doesn't really do the screen justice. It's much more crisp in real life than it looks like on the video. Um, so at the top here we've got our RPM uh, sort of horizontal bar graph. Um, uh, this section is for the water temperature. Um, we've got the water temperature of the front, the middle and the back of the head uh, and also the um, the pulse width modulation value for the water pump which is controlled by another Arduino on the car and then this is just a just a simple sort of average bar graph of the engine temperature just for a quick visual reference below that there's the engine oil information so we've got um, engine pressure and sorry engine oil pressure and oil temperature and then an oil pressure bar graph at the bottom and below that is just the alternator voltage with a little bar graph the, uh, the big digit in the center is the gear um, and below that is the, um, the fuel level uh, in the left and right tank both a, a bar graph and uh, the actual value in liters down the bottom and a, um, at the top there's just the fuel pressure at the carbies um, over here is sort of the speed and trip meters, we've got speed average speed required for the stage um, a trip meter and a stopwatch the little GPS icon up the top indicates that um, it's using the GPS for the wheel sp for the road speed. If you press uh, this button, 
it'll switch to wheel speeds which means it'll use the wheel speed information if the GPS signal is no good the top at the top there is just a, um, a clock based off um, the GPS data which is why it's not showing anything at the moment and down here we've got uh, lambda values for the um, each cylinder 1, 2, 3 and 4 the air fuel mixture of each one and then the corresponding exhaust gas temperature for each one and below that there's a, a knock sensor value that goes between 1 and 10 but it's um, not very accurate knock sensors are notoriously hard to set up uh, scroll to the next screen there's a, uh, a data logging or data viewing screen for the four lambda sensors so you can do a quick if you start logging it won't do anything now but you see the trace lines down the bottom it'll, it'll log a a quick trace on there so that you can do a quick sort of power run and have a have a look at it later you can also change the uh, interval of the uh, timing so you can get a longer or shorter trace with more or less accuracy um, the next screen is um, a bit hard to see on the on the uh, video there but this is a um, uh, a table of the, the stages and this is all read off the SD card so there's a little text file there with all the stage information um, so if we go up here we can go this is the first two a stage 10 minutes we can go to the next screen and that's all the information for that stage um, if you start the, uh, if you start that stage it'll um, record all the various information of the, of the starting point fuel information and elevation and time and if you stop the stage, it'll record that information again. I'll put that in so that I can get a good, I keep a good record of how much fuel we're using in the in the car, so I can get a good uh, sort of calculation of the um, of the fuel usage, so we can better better work out how much fuel we need in the car. Um, if we go down to this, this is a fuel fill stage, so we need to get fuel. And if you scroll over, it will show you how much fuel we need to fill. Um, where the fuel is, what's available, and any notes there that I need. And that's pretty much it. Um, I'll take it down and throw it in the car and show you actually show it actually showing some numbers up. But before we have a look at it in the car, here's some of the code that actually makes the thing tick. Uh, this is where all the work's really been at. This has taken months and months and months to get right. I started off thinking I'd just display a few things and then I kept adding bits and pieces and before you know it, it got out of control. Anyway, here is the code. I've tried to split it up to uh, the various areas in the screen to make it a bit more manageable. So there's the clock, the fuel area, RPM, water temperature, oil, alternator, speedo. Uh, there's the stage list, which is a different page, uh, the, the graphing display, which is another page on the screen, um, and so on. One of the initial things I had to get working was that although the library that I use to get the screen working has text display functions, um, getting it to update text was an issue because if you just kept um, blanking out the old value and then writing in the new value, the, the, the text would flicker. So I needed a function that would only update digits that had actually changed. Uh, otherwise the screen was horrible to look at. So I had to write a function to do that for, for decimals and uh, for floating points. Also I had to write some functions to draw those nice vertical um, and horizontal bar graphs just using uh, rectangles that change with the um, with the input value, I getting the serial communication to work wasn't too bad because I'd already written this for the other Arduino that was in the car, so I just modified that slightly to um, to read in all the the data from the data logger. And there, there's all the values that it reads in from the the serial stream, uh, and then. Yeah, then the other, I guess the other thing to get that was a bit tricky to get working was the SD card reading and writing to um, the text file. But um, that's just because I haven't done too much sort of file manipulation stuff before. Um, um, but yeah, got all that working eventually. 
so you can see there's a not an insignificant amount of work in this uh, bit of code to get that pretty screen working. Uh, it's pretty dry stuff, so I'll leave it there and I'll put a uh, link to the actual code. So uh, if you're interested in uh, having a look, see how it works, or even trying to get it working, you can grab it and uh, have a play around with it. Here it is mounted into the car. It's uh, sitting on the steering wheel. I tried various locations with the old screen and eventually settled on, on the steering wheel being the best place for it. Um, it means it's a little bit more complicated because you've got to run a coiled wire to, uh, to the unit um, to compensate for the fact the steering wheel moves, but that's no big deal. Uh, I've also mounted a couple of extra little push buttons on the steering wheel. Uh, this one pages through the display and this starts and stops the stage recording information and I did this pretty much so that on a competitive stage I don't need to take my hand off the steering wheel to start and stop the stage. So uh, we'll power it up and she comes alive. I'll, um, I'll throw the camera into the car and give you a closer look at what it looks like with some actual information. So let's we'll throw some power on Screen flicks on and away we go. Take a little couple of seconds for the there we go the serial information to come through, and you can say see, see we've got the uh, the temperatures are all showing around 14 degrees. Uh, same with the oil temperature. Um, the fuel hasn't come alive yet because I've got a 30 second averaging on there. So in about 30 seconds they should pop up with the level in the fuel gauge. 12.3 volts at the moment and no gear or RPM information. We're inside so the GPS clock's still not working correctly because it doesn't have a GPS signal. And there's the fuel in, the, in each tank that's come alive. So like I said we can page through the information here. And back, to, back to the main screen. So I'll attempt to start the car um, just to prove that it actually work, does something. So we'll turn the fuel tank on Fuel pump on, give it the obligatory couple of pumps, and get it cranked. There we go. Right. RPM's working, uh, got some air fuel ratios there. Can't run it for too long or I'll gas myself out. There you go, a completely custom in-car dash display. And it took about a year, but it was a pretty interesting little project. Next rally, Target High Country is coming up in a few weeks. The car's pretty much ready to go. Um, we might do another little video of the last minute prep work before the rally. Otherwise, stay tuned for, uh, for some video footage of, of this little car getting thrown around the roads of Mount Buller and Mansfields. Maybe spraying a little bit of champagne at the end. We'll see. Catch you then.